गुड मॉर्निंग सारिका गुड मॉर्निंग नितिन थ्री मिनट्स एंड देन विल स्टार्ट गुड मॉर्निंग हिमांशु थ्री मिनट एंड देन वी विल स्टार्ट okay so let us begin and um, in this session we are talking about service module where we can use service module so it's a very commonly used module many of you are i'm sure is aware of it what are the business scenarios in which a service module can be used do we know that what are the business scenarios in which service module can be used anybody there is my voice coming to you guys you can type here on uh, go to meeting so where in what scenario we can use thank you 
after sale of any hardware product okay to capture warranty service call if any replacement repair product so what are the all scenarios we can use service module so industry is fine but my question is business processes business scenarios what kind of business scenario service module we can use for support also okay so what are the all scenarios under which this service module can possibly be used that is the question i'm asking that when we are using this module then what is the reach of this module in what all situations this module can be used one of the now why i asked that question why i started my discussion with this question because one of the important one of the important role of sap consultant consultant to be able to map sap functionality with different business processes issue many time we have is we are very arrogant and we start thinking that we are the gods of sap and we know everything when you have that arrogance when you feel that you are god so oh, i've done this project i know it what is this service module then we die then we become mediocre that self praise is when sap consultant dies sap consultant dies when he become arrogant and he thinks oh well i have done this one project i know what is service i know what is this i know where this used and we die i'm doing sap since october 
1998 till today and i am still not done i still read every day i am still practice every day so one of the primary lesson which i want to give you to you all that be the student be student for life every day learn every day shade this arrogance which most of you have how well we know it we know that oh what is this we are the masters the day you become the master of the universe you die that is why most of sap consultant remain mediocre that is why most of sap consultant remain in certain bracket their entire life because they are too arrogant because they are too egoistic Twenty one years. I learn every day. I teach every day. I have taught more than five thousand students. In R three, not B one. In R three, and I am not done. I still learn. every day so one of the lesson which i would like to tell you all just be humble just be humble in front of goddess knowledge be very humble in front of her there are two things very important be student and also be teacher both being teacher take courage being teacher take leadership being teacher take care that you care about someone and you become teacher when you want you are not greedy and wanted to learn and when you become teacher you become a student when you become a student you become successful because you are trying to learn every day you are trying to teach every day you are trying to be with the knowledge every day so be a student be the teacher teacher require the ultimate leadership teacher require ultimate courage because you are sharing what you know we are not being protective of what we know and when you open your heart when you open your mind when you open that you are willing to teach what you know you become ultimate student then you become successful most of you will remain the mediocre student and mediocre sap consultant in their entire life because 
you're not teacher because you're not the student because many of you are very greedy because many of you lack leadership because many of you use miss the courage teaching requires courage teaching requires leadership okay coming back to the service module where service module can be used service module can be used in many areas so and most of you could not even describe and probably not aware or many of you probably are aware but you will not share because you will feel that your knowledge somebody will steal so you're protective of whatever you know i'm not protective i'm open book i have a youtube channel in which i put a hundred videos hundred videos i put it go to my youtube channel for the entire world to watch and i keep creating i keep adding those videos 100 videos one of the largest video collection for free on youtube channel for entire world to watch so we can use first and foremost or customer side we can use on vendor side we can use it internally so primarily there are the three scenarios where customer service module can be used most of you has mentioned this when i asked this question will it is can be used most of you tell yes that is true after sales services after sales or service to customer you sold the product now you want to talk to the customer but you can use service module also at the vendor side too because i might have a service with my customer i might also have a service with my supplier so you can use it on both sides so we can use vendors service to us we can also use service module internally for example we have a maintenance in our company so we can use it into in fact we do, we deploy this for one of a few customers where we can use service module internally as well so we can use on customer side we can use on vendor side we can use it internally we can use for maintenance we also use actually for preventive maintenance as well in the preventive maintenance in the preventive maintenance we use it for slight some config so we did some customization preventive maintenance uh, you need some customization we use it uh, for that also so that basically means when you're trying to use the full benefit of service module you can use any kind of a service which you need to give it to customer you can also use it for service which you want to give it to vendor and you can also use for services internally let's continue is 9.3 i'm going to talk so what does it do and we're going to do some exercise also 
So automatic generation of equipment cards. So there is something called equipment card which system you can create manually or automatically. There is also a service contract which you can create automatically and manually. You can sell an item with a service contract. So I'm selling a product. And with that product, I'm selling a service as well. You can create and manage a service call as well. So if you look at it here, in the service module, the first and foremost, these are some of the functions. There's a service contract. We'll talk about what is the service contract is. There's the equipment card. We're gonna, we can talk about that. There's a service call. There's a solution knowledge database, and there is a very service report. This preventive maintenance module, which you see here, that is not part of a standard that be customized now we go back to the business scenario now this is scenario is always on the customer side yes that is true but business scenario is not only on on customer side it can very well be on the vendor side as well so customer report a problem service rep open service call check the warranty or contract so the contract is a warranty. What obligations we have, service rep unable to solve, can provide it to a, a user, you can do, do that, you can go to visit. Service has a primarily two functions, in-house or field service. And then problem is so, solved when customer calls me that, okay, I'm using this equipment, this is failed, we fixed it, we're done. In the, when you're looking into the service, we have equipment cards. Equipment card is needed to record the service history. Service and warranty templates. So we can also use something called service and warranty template and contracts. Use, response, resolution. So we'll talk about them as well. Now there is something called equipment card. Equipment card is like an installed base. Now look at here in this carefully. So when you talk about the equipment card, equipment can, card can be created automatically. Equipment card can also be created manually. So you can create equipment card in both ways. So you can create equipment card in both methods. Okay. So equipment card can be created automatically and you can create automatically at the time of creating the AR documents when you're creating AR invoice or delivery, you can create a equipment card automatically. System knows that this item is serialized item and there is some configuration, there's a template and all that which you need to assign, I'm, I'm going to show you and then system create equipment card automatically. Now, or you can always create manually as well. So if you go back here in the equipment card, See that here? It is on sales side, it is on purchase side, both sides. So this is a equipment card was created. In this equipment card, this is on customer side. This is serial number of that equipment. This is the item number. And this item is um, Excide UPS system battery. So for the UPS system, we are giving some kind of a warranty and service contract, and for that we have this equipment card. Business partner code, this is business partner. It's a microchips, this is the customer name, this is the address. With this equipment card, we have not done any service call yet. This is the service contract, 53 which was created on this date, 4.30. I created this yesterday. For class today, I was preparing. As I mentioned to you before, when I do any class, I prepare for it. I plan for it. I think about it. I just don't do randomly. I did because I had this class today. So I looked at the document, I look at the system, I created this, I make sure that I have a system so I can show something, yeah? 
So this was Samis Contact 53, which was created yesterday because I was testing uh, this whole transaction for this particular uh, class. This is uh, this customer. In this customer, so this is equipment card. So we have a transaction 166, document number 554. It was created on this date. And this is uh, another delivery document number created on 6.30 because I created a delivery for this customer yesterday. And uh, this is a uh, red color. So it is out, delivery is out. And uh, this is in. So this item was purchased on 2.10. So for that day is a purchase order. So this serial number, one twenty, uh, which is SL at a FIG two zero one C, this was purchased on two ten two thousand nineteen because this is the first time I created this item, maybe to do some demo to someone. And I created a delivery yesterday because I was testing it just to make sure that things are working. So I can show to you guys. So there's in, there's out. It automatically comes. So that's very important. So you know that this serial number, what date it came, what date it went out. So to keep a track of this. This is what you have equipment card. This equipment card is like a master record. It's an installed base. So you have entire information pertaining to that object. So that uh, UPS system, I want to know what's going on so I can go back to the equipment card. So that equipment card, is a one place where I can go and check everything what is going on with this. So if I go back to the equipment card, that is what we can see with this equipment card. And then in the equipment card, you can have a serial number, customer number, item, history, attachment, and all that. That is what we saw with this equipment card. So this is the, your attachment if you want to do it. These are all entire history, what document was done, sales data, service contract, what service call we have not have any service call with this customer yet so we don't know that and uh, this is the address so that is the equipment card now after that we have a service contract and warranty the service contract is like a warranty look at this case slip. so when product is sold a warranty may be offered so when i'm selling a product to a customer in that case i'm also offering a service like in case of UPS so I'm selling UPS but along with the UPS I'm also selling two years warranty or two years service contract so service contract in a way is also my product we are charging for it so I'm selling UPS and then along with the UPS I'm selling two years of service warranty and service contract now this service warranty service contract in the system can be created automatically or manually. That's very interesting. So when is when the product is sold, service contract can be created automatically. So when you get a purchase uh, a customer invoice at the time, customer invoice service contract can be created automatically, or in some cases manually if you want to create manually. There are some configuration setup for that. I will show you what those configuration setups are and there are some prerequisites. So three type of uh, contract and template. So when you're creating a service contract, service contract is of three types. The first service contract is uh, with the serial number for which equipment card exists. You can have a service contract for a customer, not related to any specific item. Now, this basically means what? The second point. Now, this basically means, if you look at this carefully, service number with on item with a serial number. So, I'm selling UPS, and for UPS, I'm selling service contract. That's what it means. But many times, we are not providing service to a, spe to a special customer, and it's not related to a specific item. So, like, I will take an example of Provost in uh, Nigeria, which Ratanesh did, is that when we provide a service, it's not related to any specific item. 
we don't enter item for them it is actually related to entire customer okay this is a customer and this is my contract with them like uh, in some of the some of the service contract we did in our uh, we did uh, with uh, uh, one of the customer here in delhi nic i think they have a service contract for an item sometimes it could be related to item group so there are three type of contract and template it could be specific to item it could be specific to customer not related to any item as we did in provost uh, with related to serial number i think that is uh, more related to item uh, which is uh, subordinate and then there is a related to item group so now we have a service contract and service level agreement now in service level agreement we can define response time resolution time how much time it going to take so here i go to service contract so this is my service contract if i go back so this is the service contract we created yesterday 430 because i was testing now this look at it here the service contract with with the customer and the service contract can be on purchasing so it could be in both side so you can use service with my customer and many time when i am buying the product from the supplier i can use some service in that case as well so you can use this in both sides so this was the service contract which was created automatically this is my partner code this is microchips now system automatically take 430 because yesterday was 430 into 430 23 so 3 years okay this is a telephone number service type warranty you can see warranty it is for 3 we talked about for a serial number for business partner item group so it is for serial number is a template in the template we have a golden warranty so we have a this is as example golden warranty golden warranty silver warranty now what is the impact of this because we have golden warranty so my response time is 1 hour resolution time is 2 hour if i go here it is for this ups system um and uh, because i have a golden warranty so i going to we going to support them monday to sunday 8 am to 5 pm this also include all part or labor or travel all holidays if i change this here rather than golden warranty if i make this as a um, let's say bronze warranty so yes the moment i do bronze warranty response time from 1 hour become 8 hour resolution time become 4 days and when i go to coverage here in that in that case the coverage is only monday to friday such as sunday to there is no coverage part labor travel is not included so based upon what kind of template we use we automatically have a different obligation and this is coming from what kind of warranty we are giving to the customer this system takes automatically that is what we are saying here service level agreements do we have a gold warranty do we have a, uh, you know what do we have a bronze warranty and based upon the what kind of a warranty we are giving we have a different response time resolution time whether we want to what is my working hours monday to friday or seven days 24 hours eight hours does a part included labor included travel included or not included now automatic creation of the contract and the equipment card so in sap service con uh, this contract and equipment card get created automatically there is a configuration on the general setting in multi tab we have a set serial number so there are two prerequisites item setting in multi tab and what are those is a we i did that yesterday i looked into configuration and then the select auto check for the create equipment card we did that yep yeah. then we have a on item master record set item to be managed by serial number so if i go back here those are the so these are configuration prerequisites and if i go to inventory item so i we have an item 
and if I go to the item master, so if I go to FIG209, so this is the item, this is my UPS, uh, uh, UPS system. So the first is item should be managed by serial number. So that is one thing. And then another one is you want uh, it to be changed on every transaction or not. We said every transaction. And here we have warranty template that is called automatic warranty. This template must be assigned. So these can, this has to be there in item master. That is why when I created, when, I, when we have this uh, service contract here, in the service contract, by default, it take a golden warranty for this item because for this item, FIG209, which is Excite Battery, golden warranty, because here in the item master, we have golden warranty associated here. So that is the configuration prerequisite. So we need to make sure that it is there. And then uh, <clears throat> this is what the service process is on customer side. It does not need to be in customer side. So create service call. Service call basically means when customer calls, if they have any problem, we create a service call. So, so what? how the service call is get created? And service call is a very involved transaction. So if you go back here, and uh, if I close, and here we have a service call. Now, service call also could be on sales side, could be in purchase side. So both sides, you can do that. Who is my business partner? I select my customer. So this is my customer, microchips. And then I can use what is my, uh, you know, my serial number, what is my item. So I can enter the item which I want. So this is my item. I can use my serial number as I want. The system will take serial number. So this is a serial number selected. And this is basically when customer calls and they have a problem. What is the origin? He called telephonically. What is the problem? There is some uh, heating problem. Is the electrical cable burning? Handle by this user the lips are the response time this, create time this, resolution type this. Who is the business partner? What are the remarks? Create any activities? What solution we have provided? So I can create solution also. So there are different solutions and problems you can create. So you can have a different solutions and problems and you can associate with them as well. That is part of the solution database. You have any related document. You can assign resolution here. We change cable and it worked fine. Okay. What is the history? What kind of scheduling we do? Who handle it? So we can enter who is handling it. So who is handling it? It's handled by which user? What is the date, type, attachment? We can assign eating issue in UPS. Okay. What happened? We create a service call. I want to go back to my equipment card. You see that here, now equipment card. Now the service call comes automatically. So this equipment card get updated that today on 5.1, we have created a sim another equipment. So that is what system takes it. So service process, create service call, service response, service resolution, that if customer call, they have a problem, there's heating issue in the UPS, and then we assign the engineer and then we fix it and then we close it, right? Service call. Service call is basically to register any problem. So we just did the service call. Customer call, they have a problem. What we did, we do a service call, okay? 
we create a service call. Then we have a service response. Service response basically means we assign the service representative. So we have here, we assign service representative. So if you see here, if you go to service call, if I go to service call, and here we can have different tick, and we can do a status also, close, open, pending, with business partner, any kind of remark, we fixed the issue, and now, heating problem is resolved. Okay. What activities are there in it? Any kind of solution we want, we can associate it with it. If you want to link any other document, what resolution we have given, what is the history, we can add an other item. Um, so in history system automatically take that on this date, on this time, this is updated, service call was created. This is the scheduling, if it is not, solved by one person, we can add another person also. We have a uh, Deepak Rajneesh, he couldn't solve it. And after Deepak Rajneesh, we give it to the Gyan Prakash. So we can assign multiple people. So, and then finally, once it is done, you can say open, close, pending, closed, I say it is pending. It's not done. Once it's closed, we can say it is closed. Then it is done. Once it closed, then nothing is changeable. So we keep it pending, it is still pending. Um, <clears throat> so that is the service response which comes into the picture. And then in the last, we do a service resolution that we solve the problem. Activity can be created. Technician, activity can be created. And now that's very interesting here. Now if you see here, there is activity here. Now from here, I can create an activity and I can assign this activity to it. So I, I make a phone call, I give it to, um, uh, some issue assigned to uh, a subject, any kind of subject, whatever, whatever there. So we can uh, define phone call. Um, we have a issue, a request, and there is an issue related to customer visit. So we want customer to visit to review product assigned to which person, assigned to Gyan Prakash. So visit customer for resolving UPS issue. Okay. And that is what we can do. Variety high, medium, low, meeting location, business partner, and we can add it. So we can create this activity, can be assigned to business user, and we can involve him. So now this activity has been assigned to this service call. That is what we see here. You can have a technician activities. After that, uh, we, in the uh, equipment card, serial number, service call, service contract, everything get linked. Because when we do service call, we have a serial number, we have a customer, we integrate to equipment card, we integrate to service contract. All the three get linked. Service contract, service call, equipment card. So we see here, if I update this, I close this, I go back to the service call here. So this is my service call, which I did in the last time. In this service call, system automatically have all that information, who is my business partner, what is my serial number, et cetera. Now serial number become a unique identifier. With the serial number, if I go to equipment card, then everything get linked. So here, this is my, so this is my equipment card. Now I have created a call, uh, service call. So the service call 49 created on this date comes automatically. This is my service contract 53, which we created yesterday. Come to it. So you can go to equipment card, and with equipment card, you can see everything. How many calls you had, what is the contract, what is the expiration date of the contract. That is why equipment card is a central master data where everything gets linked. So that is why we have a service call, equipment card, and yet you can have a sales data where you have a customer, et cetera. You have various transactions. What, when this material came in, this is my purchase. So in basically means purchase transaction, 
out basically is my sales transaction which get automatically associated to it. So that is why equipment card is a central record which link everything together. Now coming back, so service call content. In the service call, you can have all these tabs, general, BP, remark, activity, solution, related item, resolution, history, scheduling, files, attachment. That is all the different tabs of the service call. So if I go back here, I look at the service call. Now we have a general business partner, remark, activity, solution, related document, resolution, history, scheduling, attachment. And that is what we see here in the service call. Now, after that, you can have a service queues. Now, if you see here, there is a queue here. You see that queue? Queue basically means sometimes what happens is when call comes in, it is in queue. We don't know who's going to handle it. Like in more in the call center situations, in that case, you can have a service queue, Q1, Q2, Q3. Service response. So we looked at it. Service response comes with a response profile. In the response profile, in, you, in the service contract, we can specify how, what is going to be my response, what is going to be my resolution time, what, what hours I'm working, what hours I'm not working. That is part of a service contract or warranty which you are giving. So if I hit enter, if I go to service contract, if I look at the service contract here, and that is where we have a, because it's a golden warranty, so response time one hour, resolution time one day. So we're going to response in one hour and we're going to, we intend to resolve in one day. If I go back here, if this is for this item, this is my service contract. Because I have a golden warranty, it's so a Monday to Sunday, all seven days, and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It also includes my part, it also includes my labor, it also includes my travel, it also includes my holidays. If I go back here, and if I look into the golden warranty, rather than golden warranty, if I go and as I did before, just to, so when I change to origin warranty, it become eight hours from one hour. So it become four days from one day. And if I go to coverage, Saturday, Sunday is not covered, and part is extra, labor is extra, travel is extra, holidays extra. That's not included. So that is what we have in service response. You can configure this just an example out of the standard box. Four hour, eight hour is defined. Obviously, you can configure it. So there is a solution knowledge database. Solution knowledge database basically is another transaction. So if we go back here in the solution knowledge database, um, here you can create different kind of a solution and uh, any kind of a problem. So there is a, this item, create on this date. Solution is a check slabs, mechanical flooring coming out. There's an attachment, there's a description, and you can define the problems, and we can define cause, and we can define the issues. We have a, this item, ACR001, create on this user, change electrical fuse. The, the symptom is electrical fuse stripping. If this problem is coming, which is electrical fuse tripping, then the solution for that is change electrical fuse. So now what happens, this is helpful for the people when you have a certain symptom, the system let you know what is the potential solution for that is causes electrical fuse tripping. Due to certain change in the voltage, electrical fuse trips. You can define that. We can have as many as, we have a, Heating issue. So when symptom is heating issues, in this item, solution change battery. Heating battery and change battery and heating issue. And if heating issue, change battery. This is the solution. So that is where you can have a solution knowledge database where you can define this. Scheduling of the technician. So we talked about it. One of the things which we have is a scheduling, which is in a service call. So if you look at it here. If I go to service call here, and if I go back to the last service call which created, one of the tab is scheduling here. We can see that, okay, we have a Deepak Rajanis assigned on this date, this time. Then uh, another person we assigned was Gyan Prakash. He can also create location, actual hours, and address. You can track the progress. And you see here, display in calendar. Display in calendar basically means if you want this to be integrated through activity to update his calendar, so if I have a Gyan Prakash, 
And if I want to update the Gyan Prakash calendar with SCP V1, you can do that. Of course, you have to integrate with Outlook. So that is where we have a display in the calendar where Gyan Prakash calendar we want to update automatically. Reminder time, we can also set up a reminder and we can also create activity. That is what we see here, reg reg scheduling technician visits. So in the last service resolution, when everything is done, we go to pending and we close it. When we close, service call is done, we finish working. That is where we have service resolution. In service resolution, you can create any kind of related document. So now what does this basically mean? Okay. So if you look at it here, there's AR invoice, yeah. Daily service labor charge, travel expenses per 100 mile, hard disk three terabytes. So many times what happens is that technicians travel, labor, any kind of a component tools which we are using, we want them to be tracked. So we can capture here that uh, daily service charge was this, quantity one, travel expenses was this, and in this service, we use hard disk for three terabytes. So all that information can be captured in this service contract. And that is where we have a related document. So if you go back here, and uh, if you see, and there is a related document here. And there is, in the related document, you can enter any additional document as you want to do. Cool. You go here, you can create a new document. Now any of these documents can be created. Look at here. So you can create quotation, sales order, delivery, return, AR invoice, all these different documents. And if it's on the purchase side, you can create an AR side. If you want uh, all documents, so these are all documents. If you want, on, because it is on AR side also, AP side as well. If you want AP side, then it's AP side because it might be might be related to vendor or it might be related to if you want all. So any of these documents you can create. You can create any document. Okay. So any document can be associated and created because you would like to track all the travel and everything and which you can maintain here. And then service resolution. This is the sheet we saw. Here we can assign any of these uh, sales document, any of these purchasing document, and um, after that, there are various reports. Okay. Now there are some very interesting report in it. If I close this, if I close this, no. And if I go back, and if I go to the reports, so there are a lot of these different reports, which is service call and all that. I like this report a lot, which is service monitor. Now this report is very interesting. Look at this report carefully. So now what this report is doing. So in this report, you have open service calls, overdue service call. In open service call, we have a total number of open calls six, total number of overdue calls is five. Okay. So here, and this keeps changing. You see that this is like a monitor. It's changing. Look at this. So it's like a service monitor. How many open calls? How many overdue calls? Because in our case, we are not adding too many service calls, but in some customer, they're creating many, many service calls on a daily, hourly basis. So the manager would like to know how many service calls is being entered. So for that, we can enter all these service calls. Okay, so total number of open calls six, total number of overdue calls five. And this keeps changing. What are those six? I can go back and check. Okay, these are six. Oh, well, this is not being resolved. This is a problem. And uh, this is, these are the different calls which was created on all these different dates. These are the open. And if I go back here, these are the overdue. 
these are the overdue calls which is created on diff different dates and handled by manager you can have a different user manager this that all the different users so these are by the manager in this queue i want to see open and i can define when say open time limit what is the open time limit so i can say 10 minute when it become open limit when is the overdue when it become overdue so i say it become overdue in 20 minutes and i can say it this system refresh every one second you can also create the sound alarm so when you get some high priority ticket system can create an alarm so this service monitor in fact is really interesting and a useful uh, transaction which can be possibly be used so although apart from that you have many other service call reports service well queue assigned report closer and all these different reports which are there in standard sap uh, for the configuration so as i mentioned before so there is a automatic creation of equipment card so this is the menu path here is there in the pdf so you don't need to write down if after this session you should go there if you are not aware i think many of you are already aware but some of you may not be so you can go to administration system initialization general setting inventory tab you can enable automatic creation of the automatic card that's the first thing and then uh, you, this is admin setup service you can set up templates you can set up different templates so this is the menu path for that in the document setting on the general tab you can enable multiple scheduling for a service so sometimes there's something called multiple scheduling for service call sometimes you have a person a then person b then go to person c then person d now if you want that scheduling in order for that scheduling to happen you need to enable that so in your pdf the path is already there i'm assuming most of you already have these pdfs if you don't have a pdf i put those pdf also on a google hangout and most of you should have access to it if you don't have access to any of these pdfs i think some of you may not have it email it to me i will give access to them so i store all these documents whatever i have into google drive so for all training material uh, there is a folder for sap b1 so that is where i do so in fact uh, what i have done is uh, all different materials so i go if i go to google drive i have uh, i think probably many of some of you are probably aware uh, many of you are not aware so i have all this uh, uh, training material and uh, and here i have all the different material different modules hybris b1 sdmm these are r3 and all that but this is b1 and i set of long back i think then you know and then here have a functional material sales material b1 material 10.0 technical material so i keep jumping all most of the material here so if you don't have access and all that you can mail it to me so i have this folder which i create me if i have other material also but i have one folder which i keep b1 so it's easy for me to keep track unfortunately i'm not as smart as you guys are so now i want to go back to sap so if i go back here in inventory i see item master i if i see fig 209 um this is my excite battery ups system and this item is serialized is issued by serial and batch number it has that golden warranty template associated to it if let us say for this item uh, i wanted to do a purchase order if i go to purchase order just to quickly show you oh, okay. because the first day of the month okay so i'm getting a purchase order i select one of the supplier i select the item so item is fig 209 
I can select items. So let's say quantity one, price this. I add. So purchase order has been created. Now this purchase order is for this serialized item quantity. I put one. I go to copy to go receipt against purchase order. So we have go receipt against PO. I have item number quantity one. And regular go receipt. Many of you know nothing really specific. But when I click on this button, so now this screen comes up. Now this is screen coming because we have a serial number. So I can say uh, FIG 209 serial. I can put whatever 5120. That's my serial number. So I put a serial number. The serialized item update. I put a serial number. I can say yes. I add my guru seat. So this is all you're familiar with very well. If I go back to um, my uh, transaction, serial and batch transaction, I can see this also. So this item, FIG Excite battery, manufacturer serial number, this uh, manufacturer serial number, this internal serial number on 51. ED is the purchase order number 60. This document on this date and this warehouse and coming from this supplier, FME associate in, because this was a receipt, so this was in. There's an in button here. I can do good receipt. And after good receipt, we go to the next step. We do AP invoice. So we can do AP invoice. So this is AP invoice. And if I go to AP invoice, I can, this is just a regular invoice. Most of you know, so nothing really uh, good. I'm just moving fast. So because all these transactions, you know, anyways. So, so we have done our end to end cycle. Okay. So if I go back here. If I go to the relationship map, so this is what we see here. There's a business partner, purchase order, 549, 51. I have a receipt engage PO, 51, AP invoice, 51. So we have all these business partner, purchase order, go receipt, AP invoice. Now, uh, after this, uh, and we saw our real inventory transactions. After that, I got this. Uh, I close this. I close this. I want to go to sales transaction. So I did a purchase of this item. Now I want to go to sales cycle. So I create a sales order. I choose any of my customer regular sales order, nothing different. So that's why I'm moving fast because in this sales order, really nothing is specific. As any regular sales order for one item, and then I maintain price and all that. I put a date here, and. Uh, I put date and I add, say yes, and we have a sales order. We go back, we have a sales order, and uh, I will go back to delivery. So this is the delivery process. Okay. So here in the delivery process, I add delivery, say yes. When I'm adding delivery, the system saying which serial number you want. So I select the serial number. So I'm selecting the serial number, FIG, the one which you purchased today, because these are all other serial number which has been created in the past. And then I'm issuing the serial number. I add, say yes. So we allocated that serial number to that particular delivery. After that, I go to copy, and then I go to AR invoice. So there's a custom invoice here. In the custom invoice, we put a tax code here. This is the tax code. And then I add it. Yes. So we created sales cycle, right? So if I go back here, relationship map, the sales order, delivery, air invoice, the regular cycle, nothing different, nothing unique. If you do day and night, right? I close all that. I close that, I go to service, I go to contract. And now I have a contract number 54. This service contract got automatically created. This is what I wanted to show you. Now this service contract date is start today. I won 20 and date end for three months, three years. 
so this service contract got automatically created for this customer so the moment we do ar invoice you, those configuration in my item master being set up service contract gets created automatically it is for this item these are all different coverages item there is no service call no attachment okay so that is what we can have a service contract getting created automatically and after that we go to equipment card and uh, this is the equipment card and this equipment card got created for today with a contract 54 which created today which is 51 and it is service contract is valid from 51 to 5123 if i want to get a service call for it so if i select my business partner i can use my business partner microchips i can use uh, my item which one is the item so fig209 so this is my item i can enter my serial number so these are the serial number this is the one we sold today so 5120 i can choose yes so there's a serial number we sold we have a problem customer calls we have a service call we added subject cable issue and we said and after that if i go to equipment card so this is the equipment card which we got created today this is service call now which we just created because of the cable issue it's a service contract which we created 54 on the start date end date it's a sales data these are the different transactions so today 51 we create a purchase order this purchase order number and this was in transaction and this is 613 and this date and uh, out so this is in this is out so that is what um, the whole end-to-end -end service cycle is linking the purchase sales and how um, we saw that uh, that how service contract get created automatically and then how equipment card get created automatically from the air inverse okay so the next step um, so first and foremost thank you and uh, thank you all and we will continue learning And uh, let's talk next week with a new topic. And I will announce what that uh, topic is going to be and uh, let you know. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you guys.